Namaste, my friends. Welcome. Hi, I'm Stefan Micus, sitarist, and today we're going to talk about a question that I've gotten a lot recently from many of my musician friends, and that is, if I can play guitar, will that help me to play the sitar? And we'll find out the answer to that question in this video. <laughs> Hi, Stefan Micus here, and today we're going to talk about the difference between the sitar and the guitar. And if I can play guitar, will that help me to play the sitar? The answer to that question is both yes and no, and let's see why. Start out by looking at the basic structure of the sitar. You can see it's got many parts that are the same as on a guitar. Strings, frets, tuning pegs, a neck, a body, uh, bridges. but if you look, you'll also notice that they're very different. Uh, let's start by looking at the neck. You see the neck itself is a bit bigger than a guitar neck, almost twice as wide, and it's hollow inside. And the hollow, the hollow chamber inside is a sound chamber that is connected both to this second sound chamber up here called a tumba, and you can see it's got a sound hole in the back of it, and it's also connected directly into the main chamber here. So. The sitar is actually one long sound chamber from top to bottom. Now let's look at the neck again, and this time let's look closely at the frets. If you notice, the frets are large curved pieces of steel that are actually tied on to the neck, and they're movable. So I can slide that fret up like that, or I can slide it back down changing my pitch. Now the reason we have the movable frets is because the scale system in India is quite a bit different from the scale system that uh, is in Western music. We divide the scale into 22 note divisions in Indian music. Most sitars are voiced to play at a, a tonic note of C sharp. This one here, it's an older sitar and I've got it actually pitched to C. It sounds a little bit better in that C range. Quite resonant. So let's look at the strings right now. There's uh, several different sections of strings on the sitar. Uh, there's one main playing string. And since it's a modal instrument, most of the action happens on, on, on the one string, and the other strings are used primarily as uh, for sonic embellishment and decorations. So you've got the second string rings the tonic note. And then you've got two drone bass strings. Um, which sometimes act just as drones, or sometimes, or sometimes we'll play them down. They're often played in that range in what's called the alap, which is the beginning of a rag, a very slow, mellow section. Now we've got another set of strings up here at the top of the neck called the chikari strings, and they're used for rhythm. And they play at a double high octave, and an octave, and a fifth. So we've got three notes playing the fifth and two octaves. If you look really close, you see that the highest Chikari string is mounted over this little post, and the next one is on this post here. The next set of strings is the sympathetic strings, and they run actually underneath the frets and the main layer of strings. And there's anywhere from 11 to 13 sympathetic strings on a sitar. This one has 13. They're tuned to whatever the scale of the raga is that you're playing in. Right now we're tuned to a scale called Bilaval, which is the same as the Western major diatonic scale. Next let's look at the, uh, the bridges. Now, you'll notice the bridge is quite wide as opposed to a guitar bridge, which is just a single, a single point. And the string vibrates over this entire width of the bridge, which is about an inch to an inch and a quarter. And this surface is carved to a slight angle. 
a slight curve and as the string vibrates over that curve it actually changes length a little bit and that's what gives the sitar the, the familiar buzzy resonance that you have um, the uh, arc and the bridge are called juari um, sometimes the term refers to the bridge itself and sometimes it refers to the actual carving of the arc on the bridge Now let's look next at the pick that we use. The pick is quite a bit different from a guitar pick. And this is it, it's called a Mizrob. And it's made out of hard steel. You can see it fits very tight on my finger. And it leaves some, uh, some heavy calluses. It hurts at first, makes you feel a little bit miserable. Now another thing about the, guitar, the sitar that's different from the guitar is a lot of the motions that we use with our hands are the exact opposite of what we're used to doing on the guitar. So for example with your guitar pick you're used to doing a downstroke as your main as your main stroke but here we use an upstroke as our main stroke with our misrod. So upstroke. And that's called da and we do have a downstroke. It's Ra, and we have a combination called Dara and a double speed called Diri and there's combinations of those too and then they're used also in combinations with our bending technique now this is another part of the sitar technique that is the opposite of guitar technique now if you look close you'll notice that my first string is right here it's up in the middle of the fretboard as opposed to on your guitar it's down here at this end uh, the reason for that is when you bend on a guitar, you're bending up like this. But when we bend on the sitar, we're bending down from the top. So our bending technique is, is the opposite direction that you're used to. So that's a quick rundown of what's the same and different about sitar and guitar. Uh, even though it looks similar, it's actually quite a bit different. If you play guitar, it may help you, particularly if you have a knowledge of intervals and modes. But if you try to apply the hand techniques that you're used to to the guitar, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to work very well. It's much better to start out learning the proper techniques on the sitar first. And then later on, you know, you can experiment. So, happy playing. Thanks for checking in. I'll be posting more videos with lessons and tips about sitar playing. So, please come back. Thanks a lot. Thank you.